Hey everyone, I just wanted to walk you through how to use the auto handwriting rig for Cinema 4D. I have a new empty scene open and we're going to copy the rig over from the provided cinema file. So I'm going to jump over there and this is the rig, the pen. So we'll copy that and we'll paste it in here. I'll hit S on the keyboard to frame it up. It's at real world scale so the pen is slightly smaller than the rest of the scene. Um, to get started, we're going to draw a spline. That's going to be our guide that we're going to want to trace. So I'm going to jump into the top view here. I'm going to grab the sketch tool. I'm just going to use my trackpad to write a crappy hello spline. And it's going to smooth it out for me since it doesn't look so terrible. And we'll jump back into perspective here. We can see that my spline is kind of large. So I'm going to grab it with the scale tool, T on the keyboard, scale down to actual handwriting size, so we'll say 10%. And um, we're going to get started here. So the basic workflow here is we'll jump into the pin rig tag of our object, and um, we're going to drag our spline into the target spline slot. Now it already has keyframe on it. Um, from the, the scene that we copied from. So we can go ahead and just hit play and see what happens. Let's get started, move over there. If we hide our target spline, we can see that the rig is tracing it, which is perfect. Then it moves back. So that's kind of slow. Let's adjust our timeline here so we can show you guys a few things. Looks like we have it going over like 13 seconds. We'll drag that back a little bit. We'll drag the preview timeline back as well. There we go. That's a little bit better. That's kind of fast, but you get the point. Now, to actually get the ink on our uh, paper, you're going to have to trace what this uh, pen is doing. And there are two ways that the pen rig will let you do that. The first way, is using a tracer object. So we'll go to MoGraph Tracer. And what we actually want to trace is the pin tip. So we'll drag that in there. And now you can see it's tracing our pin tip, but it's tracing it when it's in air, which is weird. We don't want that. So what we have to do is we have to use a little bit of Espresso. All we have to do is right click on this trace active parameter in our pin rig. We say expressions, set driver, and in the tracer, there's a matching trace active checkbox. And it's object tab, and we say expressions, set driven, absolute. Now it's only going to trace the spline when our pin is down, which is perfect. And to get that to show up in a render, you either put a hair tag on this or you sweep it. So we can sweep it and we'll make our pin stroke a rectangle shape. That's way too big, so we'll scale that way down. Way, 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 way down. So we can actually see what we're doing. There we go. And to get the best effects, you can go ahead and say parallel movement in the sweep, and that will make things look nice. So that's one way to get the pin rig going. Another way is to actually just sweep the original spline that we're using as our guide. We'll get this tracer out of here. There we go. And now we can see that that is obviously not working. It's just always there. All you have to do is the same little trick with our um, expressions, but we're going to use this trace end growth parameter now. I'm going to say expressions, set driver, and the sweep. We'll use our end growth and we'll say right click expressions set driven absolute and there we go now our pin is tracing our spline once again either way works the same it's kind of up to you how you prefer it work i want to go ahead and show you a couple parameters of the pin and uh, how we can how we can get this animation looking nice so we're going to jump into our pin rig and walk you through some things. The first thing is this stroke easing. Um, we can 
make it so that we start our stroke gently and in the middle are going nice and fast, kind of like an, an aggressive rider would do. So here we go. Our stroke will start nice and easy in the middle. Boom. There we go. And it ease it out of the tail. So that's, that's how the easing works. In our pin ergonomics, we can change the handedness of the hand that holds our pin. So if we want it to tilt left like you are a left-handed rider, that is what that does. Um, our grip choke, we'll show you what that does. This is the pivot point where the pin rotates from. It is essentially where your fingers would be holding the pin. So if I click on this grip null, you can see this is what we're adjusting, the um, where that grip null is aligned to our pin. So I can come back here. I can lock this attributes window so we can control it. And I can click grip again so we can see what we're doing. And if I adjust my grip choke here from 14% to 100, you can see we're going to be pivoting our pin from the tip as if we're like holding the tip of it with our fingers. And if it's zero, we can hold it all the way down at the base. This will essentially change how much um, rotation you get in your pin. See how much that's going nuts now because no one can really hold the tip of the pin that low. So I'll set this back to 14 where it was, which is a more natural spot that you would hold a pin. Our next parameter is arm movement. This is um, how much um, rotating of the pin that um, is being done. So with arm movement set to 100%, this is very robotic, like you're doing all of the writing with your arm and not with any of your wrist or fingers. And if we set this back to zero, this is your arm is not moving at all. You're writing completely with your wrist and fingers, which is not possible in real life. 50% um, around there looks pretty realistic. Your hand height and palm offset, these two are linked. This is essentially changing um, the, the angle that your pin is being held at. So if your hand is not as tall, your pin would rest lower. Or if your hand is tall, your pin would rest higher. Same with your palm. If your fingers are extra long, your pin would be at, at a different angle than if you have short fingers. But these two um, are connected, so you'll have to adjust accordingly. Our next parameter is our auto lift segment interpolation. This is what makes the auto handwriting rig so realistic looking, is that it actually lifts and um, moves from letter to letter, stroke to stroke. So if you turn this off, this would be essentially the same as just um, having your pin trace a spline, uh, which might be desirable if you're only doing one big long stroke. If not, then you can interpolate between segments and it will look much more natural. The pin lift threshold, this is what percentage of our guide spline does the pin start to lift and um, stop lifting. So. If you want the pin to take a longer time getting from segment to segment, you would increase this. And if you want it to take a shorter time getting from segment to segment, you would decrease this. This is just essentially how long it takes. So now um, the amount of time that the pin takes to get back to the beginning of the segment is much more natural because we shortened this. The pin lift distance parameter is how high we lift the pin when we're in between strokes. We set this to something outlandish like 10. It's going to go crazy up high and then come back down. A parameter of half a centimeter usually looks pretty good at real world scale. And the pin lift easing it eases your pin when it's going in between strokes. Uh, this graph only represents half of the move. So this would be a um, ease out and then an ease in again because um, it is interpolating from when it lifts at the end of a segment and then when it goes back down at the beginning of a segment. So if we set this graph to look like a normal easy ease graph, we will get a easy ease on our lift up and then another easy ease on our set back down at the end of the segment. So it's going to ease it to the middle and then ease it back down again. So that is how that works. I will undo it because the default looks pretty good. So that is the auto handwriting rig.